he'll be thanking the people of saskatchewan for the measures they have taken already for social distancing for trying to cooperate for helping their neighbors he might even single out a few individuals who have gone above and beyond what might be expected in helping their neighbors now this has taken quite a toll on the people of saskatchewan for small business extremely difficult to not be able to sell anything to serve their customers many people have lost their jobs or unemployed they're at home they're wanting to go to work when they can but of course no one wants to reopen the economy unless of course it is safe to do so so the premier is going to have to balance all of these things uh offer some encouragement and take a very cautious approach going forward all right wayne i know you've been covering politics for a very long time we appreciate your insight and we'll check in with you after we hear from the premier tonight now, as of today, Saskatchewan has 61 active cases of COVID-19 in the province. We're going to get to those numbers a little later on in the newscast as well. Premier of Saskatchewan, as he makes this announce and speaks to the people of the province. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I want to talk to you about where we've been, where we are, and where we are going as we fight the spread of COVID-19. I want to begin tonight by saying thank you. Thank you for following all of the guidelines and the restrictions that have been put in place to contain the spread of COVID-19. The last few weeks have been difficult for everyone. This is not how things are supposed to be. People are meant to be together and it's against our very nature to stay apart. But by doing so, we have protected ourselves, our families, our neighbors, and our province. By doing so, we protected our healthcare workers, and we ensured that our health, our health system was not overwhelmed. And tonight, I can tell you without any doubt, it is working. Saskatchewan has reduced the spread of COVID-19. We have flattened the curve. And that is thanks to you, each and every one of you. Over the past few weeks, we all had to quickly learn a strange new way to live, and we did. We learned to stay physically away from one another, while at the same time staying connected and supporting one another through this difficult time. We figured out ways to work from home if we were able. Employees at grocery stores and pharmacies and other businesses that stayed open, well, they came up with new ways of doing things to protect themselves and their customers while still providing an essential service to the Saskatchewan people. We learned about physical distancing, self-isolation, and flattening the curve. We learned how to pull together by staying apart. And we did all of these things as if lives depended on it, because they do. We have seen what happened in other parts of the world where this virus spread quickly and the health system became overwhelmed. Well, thankfully, that has not happened here, and that is because of you. So thank you. Thank you to everyone working in our health care system, the doctors, the nurses, the technologists, and the pharmacists, the cooks, the cleaners, and the maintenance workers, the students, volunteers, and the retirees who have returned to the workforce. Thanks to all of the people providing the other essential services that we need. I'm thinking about the folks working in our grocery stores and in our food distribution system, the workers delivering food and parcels to our homes, the truckers who keep our supplies moving, the utility workers who ensure that we have power, heat, and clean water, the farmers and the ranchers, and of course our first responders, the police, the firefighters, our EMTs, and paramedics. Thank you to the parents whose kids have been at home these past few weeks instead of at school. And thanks to the teachers for finding ways to ensure that our kids can still be students. Thank you as well to everyone who isn't working right now. Everyone who is doing the right thing by staying at home to reduce the spread. Thank you to the businesses that have been required to close temporarily or to severely cut back your operations. And to all the employees of those businesses who are now staying at home because you may have lost your job. I know this is an extremely difficult time for you and for your family. But tonight, because of the tremendous effort of Saskatchewan people, 
and the success that we have had in reducing the spread i think we can begin to provide a bit of optimism and a road map for businesses and services to gradually reopen and to allow for more people to return to work again the only reason that we can begin to have this conversation tonight is because together we have reduced the spread and we have flattened the curve by any objective measure what we are doing in saskatchewan it is working what you are doing is working as of today, Saskatchewan has 326 cases of COVID-19. Four people have unfortunately passed, and we mourn with their families and with their friends. But 261 people have now recovered from the virus, and today there are only 61 active cases and just five people in hospital. So to put those numbers in context, on a per capita basis, the number of COVID-19 cases in Saskatchewan is about 70% below the Canadian average. And the number of serious outcomes, hospitalizations and deaths, is more than 90% below the national average. And at the same time, the COVID-19 testing rate in Saskatchewan is more than 40% higher than the national average. We are doing so well here. So we can continue to reduce the spread and to keep those case numbers low, while at the same time, can we gradually allow more businesses to reopen and more Saskatchewan people to return to work? Well, I believe we can, but only if we proceed with caution, great caution. Our government takes this decision extremely seriously. We know there are risks on both sides. If we move too quickly, we risk increasing the spread of COVID-19. If we move too slowly, we risk permanent damage to the livelihoods of thousands of Saskatchewan people, businesses that may never reopen, and jobs that may never come back. So we have to find the right path. So tomorrow, we will unveil a plan to gradually and methodically reopen businesses and public services that have been closed because of this pandemic. It is a plan that is developed in close consultation with Saskatchewan's Chief Medical Health Officer, Dr. Shahab, and it is a plan that will be carried out in five phases. And as we proceed with each phase, we will carefully monitor COVID-19 case numbers and we will adjust the plan as required. As businesses are allowed to reopen and employees return to work, they will have to follow stringent physical distancing and cleaning procedures just like the grocery stores and many other businesses that are open and operating safely today. As we cautiously proceed through this reopening process, some of the other restrictions will remain in place for the foreseeable future. We know that in Saskatchewan and, and elsewhere, the largest and most dangerous outbreaks have been related to travel, to large gatherings, and to seniors' care homes. So all of those restrictions will remain in place. We also know that aggressive testing and contact tracing are key to controlling the spread of COVID-19. Canada has one of the highest testing rates in the world, and Saskatchewan has one of the highest testing rates in Canada. That will continue. In fact, we are looking at ways to increase the testing and the contact tracing in the days ahead. Ongoing restrictions in high-risk areas and aggressive testing and contact tracing, this is how we will continue to keep our case numbers low and manageable as we proceed with caution through the reopening process. Tomorrow, Dr. Shahab and I will outline which businesses and services will be included in each phase of the reopened Saskatchewan plan. And some dates in May, when the first couple of phases will begin. So again, let me be very clear. This will be a gradual, methodical, and a cautious process. It's not like flipping on a light switch. If anything, it's more like a dimmer switch that's been turned down. And over the next several weeks, we will gradually be turning up the light once again on Saskatchewan's economy. It's been said that adversity doesn't build character, it, it reveals it. Well, I believe that to be true. Here are some examples that reveal everything you need to know about Saskatchewan's character. Alex Pelche of Regina, he decided to make 200 brown bag lunches in his apartment at Easter time. 
he figured with the pandemic there was some people that that may be going hungry so alex hit the streets and he gave those two hundred lunches to people in need meanwhile in prince albert seventy nine year old eleanor land decided to fire up her four bread makers eleanor's been baking fifty to sixty loaves of bread a week for the community cares kitchen the kitchen has been providing meals for families that have been impacted by covid nineteen and in Moose Jaw, Chris Merkel decided to post the following on Facebook, and I quote, I will be offering my help to anyone in the city for running errands, and I will gladly go get your groceries or anything you need. I'm a single person with no kids in my 30s, and I feel that I should be putting myself in harm's way before anyone else. These are three stories. These are three stories out of thousands. It's true. Adversity does reveal character. And in this crisis, your character has been revealed as resilient, determined, courageous, and compassionate. Caring and strong, that's Saskatchewan. And I have never been so proud to call this province home. Thank you. You are just listening to a provincial address by the Premier of Saskatchewan. Now, in it, Premier Scott Mulvey offered his appreciation, thanking the people of Saskatchewan for their efforts to continue to contain the spread of COVID-19. He also did give some indication of how the province will begin to phase in businesses who were forced to close because of this pandemic and for reaction on what was said. Let's once again bring in Wayne Mantika. So, Wayne, what were the big takeaways from that speech? how the premier put it he said reopening the economy won't be like flipping a switch it'll be like using a dimmer switch where the light is turned up gradually and uh, i think that's how he's going to uh, announce the reopening of the economy tomorrow he spoke about a five phase plan the first two phases will be implemented in may now he did not say who would be included in those first phases but i think he might go in reverse order now if you remember last month the first uh, things to to close were schools and then he went uh, on to businesses and gatherings and finally they closed certain services like chiropractors optometrists and hairdressers now they may well choose to go in reverse order perhaps first opening some small businesses uh, social distancing will be practiced uh, they'll make sure everything is clean I suspect they might even limit the number of customers allowed into stores to make sure that if anything were to spread uh, it would be kept to a small a number as possible. All right, thank you very much for that, Wayne. That's Wayne Mantica reporting live for us this evening, giving us some indication of what to expect when those details are revealed tomorrow. Now, one of the messages in the Premier's speech was offering thanks to the people of Saskatchewan who have made Saskatchewan sit in this battle as of right now. Yeah, Heather, as the Premier mentioned, Saskatchewan currently has some of the lowest case numbers in the country, with just 61 active cases. As of today, Saskatchewan has seen 326 people infected with COVID-19. 261 of them have recovered and four people have died. The province has seen more recoveries than new cases for 14 of the last 17 days. However, northern Saskatchewan has been hit hard over the past week, with 16 active cases in the far north region, which is three more than Regina. Five of today's six new cases were in the far north which currently has the second most active cases in the province behind Saskatoon's 24. Southern Saskatchewan currently has only one active case and hasn't reported a new one since April 5th. The central region has seen two new cases since April 1st. Both of those remain active. It's been 42 days since the province announced its first case of COVID-19. Saskatchewan declared a state of emergency on March 18th, limiting public gatherings to 50 people. Two days later, schools were closed and mandatory self-isolation after travel became law. On March 25th, gatherings were limited to 10 people and more restrictions were put in place on businesses, which brings us to the Premier's plan to begin reopening parts of the provincial economy. Premier Most reiterated during his address, aggressive testing and contract tracing will be uh, key to allowing the province to reopen areas of the economy. Saskatchewan has conducted 25,321 tests so far. The province has averaged three, 630 tests per day over the past week, which has been a drop off of 125 tests per day from the previous week and well below the goal set by Premier Mo of 1,500 per day by the end of this month. 
The Saskatchewan Health Authority currently has 250 people working on contact tracing and says it has a contingency plan to increase to more than 400 in a surge. Businesses that are allowed to uh, reopen will be required to follow strict physical distancing and cleaning guidelines. Heather? Okay, thanks very much, Mark. And that brings us to tonight's web poll question. We want to know, are you satisfied with how the province has handled the COVID-19 pandemic so far? Let us know on our website, ctvnewsregina.ca. Now, there is some other big news we want to get to tonight. Teachers and the government have reached a tentative agreement.